Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be answering a variety of questions. I'm going to be going in more detail into some of the questions that was asked of me via my Instagram and also on Facebook. Um, and this is also an opportunity for any of you to ask any question that you would like. You can put in the comment section below. Let me know if you have any questions at all. So I wanted to talk about in this first segment, I wanted to discuss Mormonism. So just yesterday, I, well, I received, not just yesterday, but I've been receiving like messages. Some of you may have been receiving messages from your local LDS missionary kids. Okay, they're called mission, they're elder, they're called elders, but they're like 18, 19 year old kids. And I've just received messages. I've been receiving messages from them um, periodically, really for the past several months. And I, a couple days ago, I just decided, hey, I want to know if you guys want to come and record a video with me, live stream with me. And they said, sure, we want to have a Zoom meeting first to talk about it. And really, they already had their mindset that they weren't going to have a recorded video. Um, so I'm still hoping to do something like that in the future with one of them. But nevertheless, we got into a discussion about um, our views. They, uh, I, I told them about just two verses, which I want to, which I want to examine with you all today. Two verses that absolutely refute Mormonism, that absolutely just causes their foundation to crumble. I, there's so many, but there are two key verses that I use that I've used. Um, since I've started engaging in um, discussions with people of different faiths and specifically Mormonism. Mormonism was one of the first groups, religious groups, in which I had engaged with on my own. Um, I, was, when I was in college, I was 19 years old, and I started engaging with uh, more missionaries who came to the door. Uh, I have the truth, and so I wanted to give them the truth, and so we talked. But there are pri two primary verses that I would encourage you to use when you have a discussion with a Mormon. Um, not too long, and, and we're going to be looking at that in a few moments, but another story not too long ago, um, um, I got into a discussion with a, a bishop of the Mormon church. He invited my family and I um, to go see the temple in Mesa, gave us a tour, and in the tour, and after the tour, him and I discussed our our perspectives. Um, I just I got an opportunity to share Jesus with them. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, what a bishop is in the Mormon Church, uh, they are they're in essence like a pastor of their own you know type of church. They call wards. What's up, brother? Um, it's funny. Let me know, uh, Mike. Why are you why are you going by echoes? I want to know why that. I want to know why you're going by echoes. Um, and also, just if, if you're just joining us, feel free to ask any question that you like. In this particular segment, um, um, we're going to be talking about this particular segment. We're going to be talking about a variety of things, but in this particular segment, we're going to be talking about two verses that absolutely refute Mormonism. And so the first verse that I want to examine is Isaiah chapter 43. Excellent passage. I would encourage you to commit this to memory. And let me pull this up so you can read it along with me. Isaiah 43, 10 says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. Okay, I want to stop there just to talk about Mormonism for a moment and why this refutes Mormonism. Um, for those of you who don't know what Mormonism teaches, the goal of Mormonism is to reach and achieve exaltation. And all that means is that they believe you can become a God one day. If you follow the laws and ordinances of the, of the, of the Mormon church, you can achieve God status one day. You're going to continue to worship uh, God, the father, their view of God, the father, you're going to continue to worship him, but you also will be able to um, have a God, You also become a God of your own planet. And you can have people worship you as well. However, Isaiah 43 10 says this, this is the God of the Bible. The, the God of the Bible says this, you are my witnesses. 
declares the Lord, my servant, you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed. Mormonism teaches an infinite regression of gods. Um, you, you can't, you, there will, there's a continual infinite cycle of gods that Heavenly Father had a God before him, that God had a God before him, that God got a God before him. And so the God of the Bible, though, says, no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. And so this verse absolutely refutes Mormonism because they believe that they can achieve exaltation. They believe, and the goal is to achieve um, Godhood status. And so um, I brought this up to the, to the missionary boys, to the missionary kids, and they really try to be like sensitive. Like they're like, we're not really trying to focus on that with you. And I'm like, man, just, just be real honest. Just be honest. This is, this is your goal. This is what you want to achieve. Right. And they try to not talk about it um, as if they're embarrassed about it, as if they, they think that it's like a turnoff for people or something. And it is because it's completely inconsistent with God's word. Second verse that I would encourage you to commit to memory. So Isaiah 43, 10 is one of those verses um, and then another verse I would give you is in Colossians chapter one. And I showed them this verse yesterday, Colossians one, and they had no idea that this was in the Bible. They never heard of this verse. And admittedly, I, w- I wish that they would have you know, allowed me to have a discussion with them via recording, but admittedly they said that they had never heard of this before. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can ask any question that you want. <laughs> Mike, long story. Well, all right, I'll, I'll just ask you uh, on, a, on a different day when I see you and I can ask you uh, why you're going by Echoes. Because I was like, you used to go by Judah Nation. So I had no idea that it was you even on my channel and you're commenting and being encouraging. So thank you for that, brother. But Yuri, sure, you can ask any question that you'd like. Um, so I'm um, back to um, Colossians chapter one. Excellent passage. Talks about Jesus, who Jesus is. Mormons want to talk about Jesus. The Mormon missionary boys, they want to talk about Jesus with you. But the Jesus um, that the Bible teaches matters. There is only one Jesus. Every other Jesus is false. So it matters who Jesus is. If we have a Jesus that is false and that isn't consistent with the Bible, we have a Jesus that cannot save. And the Mormon church has a Jesus that cannot save. Look at this verse. They did not know that this was in the Bible. Um It says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Okay, I'll stop right there just for a moment. People tend to take this verse and they tend to think firstborn means that Jesus was literally born from the Father, that he came into existence. But this idea is not talking about being birthed physically. The idea is like the inheritance. As a son receives the inheritance, they were received the authority from the Father, the inheritance. So Jesus is given preeminence. He's given supreme authority because of what he has done. Um, and so it's not talking about a literal offspring of the Father as Mormonism teaches. And I will prove that with that next verse. Verse 16, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible, and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Um, all things. So this verse refutes Mormonism because of this. Mormons believe Jesus was created from the Father. And furthermore, that Jesus and Satan, or Jesus and Lucifer, are both brothers, as we all are. Brothers with Jesus and Lucifer, spiritual. They believe that the Father had, the Father, um, had sexual intimacy with one of his goddess wives and produced everybody in the pre-existence, including Jesus and Lucifer. But, but Colossians chapter 1 teaches, by Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So, I, and I asked them, I said, is Lucifer invisible? And they said, yes. So this verse is not saying that Jesus is Lucifer's brother. It's saying that he's the creator of Lucifer. This verse is not saying that Jesus is brothers and sisters with demons or angels, but that he created all of them. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Everything that is in existence was created by Jesus and created for Jesus. These two verses absolutely refute Mormonism. If you receive value, like this video and subscribe to this channel. Furthermore, um, that, oh, that, you, that you provided. Thank you for everybody. If you have any last questions, put it in the comment section below. Um, I just want to thank you all for watching um, today. And if you received value, make sure you like 
this video and subscribe to this channel and I will see you in another video.